What is up everyone? Welcome to the video Blacklight here talking about Grey Zone Warfare and my thoughts on its current status at the moment but also its possibilities for the near future and future itself. Now it is safe to say I have a chunk of hours in this game with just over 130. I basically have not just been questing, I've been doing everything. I mean going to the enemy base camps, going to the the main enemy's town doing a bunch of tasks and pvp all in one getting a true feel of what this game could be not only do we have things in the game currently that are a bit frustrating a bit annoying and we, i think we can all understand what they may be but I truly, truly am in love with this game. And I think it's pretty obvious when I have 133 hours in it. Now, first and foremost, I did want to thank you all for supporting me and the channel ever since I've been uploading Grey Zone Warfare content. You guys have been supporting me so much. The views have gone up, everything, the support, the community. So first and foremost, thank you. If you do like this video, please like and subscribe. Comment for the algorithm as of course. But let's get into it. I am Blacklight. Now, of course, as always, for me personally, I like talking about the things that I find that are in an, a bit of an iffy or bad spot at the moment in Grey Zone Warfare. Obviously, with launch, we did have some issues or maybe a lot of issues. And luckily for myself, I wasn't the person that lost their container, lost their head and had this glitch where you're running around with no head. But in saying that, I've met some people, they've reset their accounts and that's not what you want in a game when they're first launching you don't want people that are getting to level 10 level 5 level 15 and then having to reset their accounts just to simply play the game it's an unfortunate situation that hasn't fully been rectified at the moment but again these things happen in games and uh, I'm sure it'll be fully resolved in the future but if that is one of you hang in there and thanks for your support because we do appreciate it we see it in the community so thank you in regards to AI I think this would be the nitpick from everyone ai vastly can be very easy at one point you can one tap an ai in the head then all of a sudden you're hitting even a casual low tier ai and they are tanking 25 bullets and still not dying this is something that they said that they had rectified and fixed before the game launch this seems to be false this seems to be a main issue in places all over the map including tiger bay where ai is absolutely cracked and will kill you in one to two bullets and this is the frustrating part when you were going into these high damage areas or high risk reward areas and you get this shot on somebody's head whether you're tapping them twice or once in the head with nice ammo whether it be m855 high or whatever it may be you want to feel that realism you want to feel like you've just taken a good route good positioning to kill an enemy uh, unit and then all of a sudden you tap them in the head twice once three times they turn they flick you and you're dead and this is highly annoying this is something that to me is the number one issue issue or number two issue alone with landing zone camping which we will get into later on but i think the ai is actually most probably the, the number one issue because most of the time we're killing ai this was meant to be a pve based game with pvp fic, uh, features which i think also in the future will change i think uh, there'll be a lot more pvp coming in the future with certain things that they do however to me this seems like a fix that can be easily addressed although it hasn't been addressed as of yet i feel like it's just an, an annoying thing to go through at the moment coming back getting your mates to drop your stuff so you don't loot your body basically from there having to fly back again hoping to not die and this is especially annoying if you are a solo player so that's something that i really want to see rectified asap because i think the ai being sponges especially some of them especially when we get to places like uh, the hotel to tiger bay even ground 
ground zero in the future, we don't want to see this as an issue. We want to see this as something that is polished and ready for action so we can enjoy killing AI in a fair way. And if we do get out positioned or we do overshoot or miss our shots, then we get punished for it, not the other way around. All right, next, let's speak about uh, something else that is a massive, massive issue, but slowly getting rectified in gray zone warfare. That would be landing zone or LZ camping. Now, essentially what you would do is you would uh, choose between one of two or one of three depending where you are on the map landing zones to land to now once that landing zone has been selected you are locked in once you are on that chopper to go into that landing zone now essentially what people were doing from uh factions is camping at lz zone spots waiting for people to land out of the chopper and as soon as they came out of the chopper they would blast bullets into your face until you die get your gear move away call a chopper leave or just hang around and do the same thing for, for longer uh, for longer periods of time. This isn't something I think Madfinger Games expected, but it is here and it is done. And they've already suggested and already implicated things on ways to fix this. I actually spoke to the dev and they've already implemented and you might've seen this already as you're playing, but a five second invulnerability status. So what this means is as soon as you come off the chopper, you are invulnerable for five seconds. What, what this really means means is you should be choosing LZ zones that have a good coverage behind them because if people are there you're going to have five seconds to get to a sort of safe spot as possible then maybe engage into a fight. Do I think this is the ultimate bee's knees fix to uh, this LZ problem? No. There's, there have been talks around the helicopters having AI gunners on them. I don't think that would be a fair thing but it is talks around it. Also the helicopters having smoke bombs. Maybe there could be a feature where we have helicopters and we have the abilities to purchase things with our own money made from uh, tasking and killing and selling items where we could establish uh, or even have like an upgrade system for our own helicopters. So when we call in a helicopter, we actually get our specific upgraded helicopter, whether it be smoke bombs, AI gunners, whether it be the ability to take a different LZ that's closer. It could be called like uh whatever it may be called like the xlz the x factor lz or uh vip lz whatever you really want to call it but the ability to have something with the helicopter that gives us protection i think will definitely be cool especially for nighttime raids or nighttime questing and tasking and lz dropping when it does come they also have said that the highest thing they're most probably looking at is giving the possibility for you to change lz's while you're in the copter so so maybe you get a message from, some, from someone or a squad like message of uh on the on the microphone like hey i was just at lima one i i literally just saw three people there two minutes ago are you going there and then you go yeah i am but then i can click lima two boom changed all done so that's something i think is, that is a massive issue at the moment a lot of people know about it and essentially if you don't see a lot of your faction in certain spots sometimes you avoid them because you're kind of scared so that's something i don't think they want they don't want you to not go to a place because none of your faction is there and you don't want a landing zone to ruin that for you especially with camping etc and camping is a part of the game but i think lz camping especially when you're just starting to do a mission when you're starting to do that task is the opposite of tarkov when you might be going towards the end of your task you've got loot on you you've got uh you know your your quest items and then you're looking out for extract campers at least you've achieved something whereas with LZ, lz camping it's kind of like i haven't even achieved anything i've spent five minutes in base camp getting ready putting my stuff on uh, equipping a new item modifying it and then as soon as i land in the chopper which could be a three to eight minute ride or three to six minute ride I'm dead. And that's not a good feeling. That's not what we want. So they will be looking at doing things with that. Um, so we will see what happens there. Obviously, I think the stash is a big issue. After 130 hours, sometimes I just give up on the stash, no, not having an auto sort button. I would also love to see maybe a feature where when we complete tasks, if you can hand the task in to different vendors and get different uh, 
like rewards. I think there's been two or three tasks I've done already where you can either hand it into Lab Rat or hand it into Gunny. I would love to see some type of pop-up feature. So when I click complete on the task, essentially it then pops up with the two vendors on the screen and it says accept reward. Uh, and then it will show you what you're getting from each of them or from completing that. That would be really cool, I think. But that's something I'm going to send personally to the devs and be like, hey, I thought this was a really cool idea because I've seen people talk about that and be like no this one is better but sometimes you lose sight that you can actually even give it to a different vendor for the same quest and that sort of gets muddled with all the fun all the quest the task you know narrative etc but yeah off all of the bad things i don't think there's anything much else to talk about uh in regards to the game and the crux of the issues obviously like optimization i'm lucky enough to have like a high-ish end pc obviously you know i've been speaking to people with 10 a uh, 1080s 2080s uh, not the best setups and you know the optimization isn't great and as soon as you go in places like tiger bay or the bunker that's when it really really hits you with an fps drop so i can only imagine how bad it is for them if i'm usually getting 100 to 120 fps and then tanking down to 30 i can only imagine what someone is that's getting a regular 40 to 60 fps then going into these spots they'd be on like 5 to 10 so i think that is something they'll address constantly i think they know optimization just like any other game is really 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 important what's good about the game well let me tell you guys i've had so much fun i love that it's a 16 v 16 v 16 open persistent world i cannot even stress how cool this is the fact that that i can get into a chopper and choose where i want to go and stay there for as long as i want i don't have a timer in the corner basically saying i need to be finished by then i absolutely love this i love the thought that i could literally if i wanted to be at bunker or hunter's paradise for two hours straight not leave and have a two hour pvp session maybe it's not even up to me maybe i'm in the heat of the moment and i land around 12 people and i'm locked in at hunter's paradise in a two hour one hour pvp session this is what i love about the game i think the best things about gaming in general is when you get surprises out of nowhere it's literally the things that get your heart racing and that is what like war is about well not war in a sense like as in in games we want moments that are un unexpected we want these moments that are like that came out of nowhere then i killed this guy then i killed this other guy and i was bleeding and i was about to die i was on you know 2000 blood and i just stopped it and then boom and then i reflanked we want these stories we want these memories and that's what i love about gray zone warfare there isn't a timer put on on any of this now if you do take a look at the map in gray zone warfare there is so much land there is so much opportunity we still don't know what ground zero is we still don't know what we're going to do in ground zero whether it's just going to be a pvp section whether it's pve pvp this is something that is going to be part of the end game i assume and i think i'm really looking forward to that all the the vast areas of the map there's so much land where new POIs can be put there could be pvp only areas that we don't know about and i love knowing that the world is there even though we've got so much towns around us and things to do but there's opportunity to just sort of plot in a facility a town a city whatever it may be and boom you know we've got so much more to come and i really like that the world in itself is beautiful you cannot tell me that that it isn't what they've done here in the space of two years i think with 80 employees is absolutely absolutely wonderful i was so hyped for games like uh i think it was starfield you know even cyberpunk 2077 with so much backing behind it and the games let us down this is for what we are in and where we are at people may be angry but i think we have to actually sit back and go this game is in a great position for where it is now i love also knowing that when i get out onto a chopper when i land somewhere there can actually be a possibility i know it's most probably not going to happen but 32 enemies could be in that area now as i said i know that's likely not going to happen but even the fact or thought of knowing that 10 enemies could be around the same area 
area is absolutely wild to me. And I think this goes back to their core motto, every move matters, because you really don't know what's going to happen. And that gives you sort of that day Z vibe. You go to uh, the airfield in day Z, you know it's a PVP zone and you don't know what's going to happen. In Tarkov, when you get into a raid, you know that you're going in with like eight to 12 other players. You know what's sort of to be expected, that there could be some PVP, blah, blah, blah. But in this, it's like, I could actually go into a town like Hunter's Paradise and see no one. But my brain and the way I've been playing the game and what I've usually encountered makes me go slow and tactical because I'm used to seeing PVP or things happen. So I love that about the game. It sets you back and it really makes it so every move matters. And I mean, I really can't talk about that anymore. Now, one thing I did want to talk about that I absolutely love, but I think it's obviously not there yet. And I think they'll do a lot more things around this is base rating. Base rating to me sounds like the coolest thing ever. I think they're going to do a whole, whole lot more around this in regards to questing, in regards to rewards for defending your base, which I think they were, were actually talking about, to attacking a base, to actually successfully attacking to base. Uh, a base, the CEO talked about having real time quests for these type of things. So I think that's going to be amazing. We saw now that they recently added that the AI defenders in the base have mortars. So that's kind of cool. And I really like that. But I think the whole base thing in this game is going to be something that they maybe didn't think of uh, what they were going to focus on in the start. And when people in the early VIP access did, they were like, okay, people are really liking this. So the one last thing I wanted to talk about, and I think it was really cool, is they always harped on about this game being a PVE based then PVP game. And to me, that was fine. But I think they have suddenly realized how much PVP people are loving and forcing in the game. And when I mean forcing, I mean things like base raiding. I mean things like invading the enemy's main town. Like for me, it's Nam to Ven. And I'm doing these early quests and I could see people there. Uh, things like LZ camping is, is basically forcing PVP. And I've spoken to someone from Mad Finger Games and I've basically said, surely you guys are going to be look at, looking at doing Doing more pvp focused things due to everyone like what they're doing and he's like basically his response was yes so i think that's something that's going to be very cool about the game once again weapon customization auto sorts everything like that is going to come in time with all the patches but for now they are focusing on optimization but overall this game to me is a solid 7 8 out of 10 i'm absolutely loving it at the moment let me know your thoughts below about gray zone warfare how many hours hours have you played and what you want to see come and what you're kind of fed up with once again thank you so much for the support like comment subscribe for the algorithm below i am blacklight